Hello, hello, everybody. How you all doing today? My name is Junior, and I would like to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital Show. Thank you all for joining me. Today's date is Friday, uh, August the 26th, and we've got a wonderful show for you guys today. We've got a few things on the block here, including Flashback Fridays, which we're going to be talking about digital uh, clock. Well, not digital clock, sundial clocks, I'll say, uh, but there's another episode, there's another article here that I have for you guys uh, that's going to be talking about digital sundial clocks. Uh, we also have how senior citizens, our good old old people, how they're getting back into, or not back, but how they're starting to get into the metaverse now. And then we also have for you guys um, this website called Gatherverse, and they're pretty much holding, it looks like a large number of summits coming up uh, in the next couple of months, in the next couple of years and stuff like that, from what I've seen they are the like one stop shop for all the events going on inside or all these summits that are going on inside the metaverse. They're the ones, the, the largest ones that I've found so far. And then the last one we have from Mr. Tom Brady himself, the NFL superstar. Um, check out what he's doing here in a second. But without further ado, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll jump right into it. All right, and we are back. We are rolling. So let's jump into our first article here. How seniors are creating an inclusive metaverse. So as you can see here, this lady has on a VR headset. It's one of those ones where it's like a piece of cardboard and you can attach your smartphone to it. Those are really nice because everyone nowadays have smartphones. But older people, you know, they're in retirement homes. They're by themselves, not really with family. Um majority of the times and they need something to do they need something to stay kicking stay alive and one thing that is happening is that they are bringing the metaverse to them so they are bringing all of these vr headsets and um let's see where was that at uh if technology if technology is age inclusive early on adoption is set for success in the long term this matters considering that for every dollar spent by American households, 56, 56 cents were attributable to the 50 plus demographic in total. Older adults spend over $8 trillion per year. They are a key opportunity for industry growth. Growth As technologists and business owners, we should celebrate age-inclusive technology adoption. More importantly, as humans and as a society, we need age-inclusive um, that just did something weird. We need a, yeah, we need age inclusive technology adoption. The future of aging depends on products and uh, technologies that deliver and motivate older users to jump in and again and again. And it's saying that the metaverse is poised to lead that charge. So seniors have been diving in through virtual reality in some cases every day. Their love is tangible and growing. Some of the most popular experiences and industry leaders should strive to deliver include number one so they would like to experience stuff on their bucket list so say for example somebody wanted to climb mount everest they never got a chance to climb mount everest well vr could help them actually do that even at their ripe old age of 70 80 90 100 over 100 years old they would be able to jump into the metaverse and actually climb mount everest or if they want to travel the world, go to Tokyo, go to Ukraine, go to France, Paris, what have you, they would be able to actually do that as well because of all of these new experience that are coming around with VR headsets. Another thing would be community building. So in, and I've never actually been in a retirement home myself. Um, I hope I never have to, but when you, you know, have, Older people in retirement homes that now becomes their 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 home. All the neighbors that they have, they become their friends. It comes like your own little community. Um, and what they want to do is actually get those um, older people together again, actually doing stuff together, um, enjoying life together, and stuff like that. So they want to build a community around it. Uh, this is saying social isolation. Social isolation is one of the most dangerous health concerns for older adults. In fact, it's as detrimental to one's health as smoking 15 pack, 15 cigarettes per each day, which is crazy. Group virtual reality experiences are being deployed in senior living communities to employ residents to connect and build conversations and even new relationships following these shared experiences. 
You can also connect with family members, say for example, during coronavirus, this was a huge, huge thing. I remember seeing like posts online on social media that people were standing outside of retirement homes while their loved ones was inside a retirement home because they couldn't go inside. They would just, you know, hold up signs saying, we love you, we miss you. And then, the, you know, the loved one would have to see that through the window. Uh, they are still trying to connect with one another. And this is another way to do it is through virtual reality where they can actually go on a trip together. Again, if you want to go to Paris, France, you can actually do that through virtual reality and meet your loved one there, um, see each other or see each other's avatar, depending on how that all works out and so on and so forth. Uh, reminiscence therapy. So sharing stories is an Im immensely powerful thing. With the metaverse, seniors can explore significant places from their past, whether it be their childhood home, the place they got married, or their favorite travel destination. These stories forge bonds between family members, giving grandchildren a unique view of their grandparents' lives, um, which is a big thing as well, because I know a lot of, you know, Older people, they've, they've been around a while, so they experienced a lot and they have a lot to share. They have a lot of stories. I've met a lot of people who was alive during the time of the um, World War One, World War Two. They have a lot of war stories and stuff like that. And it's pretty interesting to, uh, to hear. Um, also with fitness. So fitness is a really big thing. My mom herself has actually <laughs> been getting really big into the fitness. Um, she just mentioned the other day that she sweat for the first time. Uh, a whole lot doing something in, in VR fitness and everything. So um, this is for them to keep staying active, which is important for the mind and as well as the body uh, with age tends to come decrease physical mobility, which makes the metaverse a great solution to get seniors moving in a way that's fun and interactive while still enabling them to explore the world in a VR bike ride. People can pedal on a stationary bike for a leisure leisurely ride with their friends all throughout the metaverse, of course. Um, so yeah, so I will drop this article here for you guys. You can kind of read the rest as well. Uh, the link will be in the description for this video. And I think that's a really big thing for, you know, senior citizens. Um, I don't want to just call them old people. <laughs> senior citizens to kind of get back into uh, the real world through a virtual world. Because, I mean, once they become of age as, as I mentioned a lot of stuff starts to deteriorate de you know deplete and stuff like that um, and we want to keep them alive as long as possible so that they can enjoy you know the fruits of their labor per se all right so the next thing that I got that I have for you guys here today is going to be a video uh, that I actually ran into it's about a clock so a lot of people may not know what sundial clocks are that's actually going to be our flashback Friday but I want to play this video first and then we'll kind of jump into all of that. This photograph is being shared on social media platforms with the claim that the object in it is a clock that shows the time in a shadow depending on the position of the sun. Reverse image search of the photo led us to a similar photo on a website that states that the object is a 3D printed digital sundial. An internet search with the relevant keywords yielded results that showed that such sundials are easily available for purchase online and come in various sizes and colors. They only work during daylight hours, mostly from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and need to be adjusted based on their latitude on the planet. Some of these sundials only count in 20-minute intervals. Videos available online show the working of such digital sundials. One of the earliest timekeeping devices, a sundial is an instrument for reading time during daylight hours from the position of the sun. They usually cast a line or triangle to indicate the hour. However, digital sundials display current time using digits which have been developed quite recently. These devices operate without electricity and have no moving parts. The sunlight is cast through a precisely designed object in the shape of numbers that show an almost accurate time of the day. There is a difference between time shown in a sundial and that seen in standard clocks. Sundials tell time from the sun but the apparent movement of the sun is not fully regular. However, the hours and clocks are made regular as they run at the sun's average rate for the year. As the device in the photo is a digital sundial that displays time only during daylight hours and not a clock that uses the sun's position to tell time, this post is misleading. When you come across a piece of news that seems too rich. All right, so I just want to actually come back. I want to, sh it was a yellow one here that I want to, uh, I want to look like. So even though this post said that that was misleading, um, yeah, this one here, this one was pretty good. Uh, even though this, uh, I guess, video here said it was kind of misleading, I'm not too worried about 
all of that, I guess, is just trying to fact check something, uh, whether this can actually tell time. But in my opinion, it is actually, quote unquote, telling the time. You do have to modify it a little bit just between on your location and stuff like that. But as you can see here, this sundial here, once the sun goes through it, it passes through all of these different breakpoints inside of this 3D printed uh, item here, which is the coolest part about it is that you can actually just 3D print this at home rather than having to, you know, go to the store and buy it if you have your 3D printer yourself. And then it actually displays based on, you know, those breaks in the uh, in the material actually displays the time through there. And um, in my opinion, that does kind of fit with what's going on in our um I guess you call it digital age because we're no longer just doing it everything through analog as they have the older sundial system we're actually bringing it up into more of the digital terms and then from there we're going to expand on it even more as we know solar power is really big at the moment so if you can actually factor that into solar power to where uh because we have solar systems now to actually kind of track and move with the position of the sun and then we have to um uh, in order to optimize the amount of power that we get from our, you know, our solar uh, panels and stuff like that. So we ac could actually tie in the clock into some of those devices and actually be able to display uh, the time in our houses, you know, just with a simple device. So this is, to me, in my opinion, the start of how stuff like this comes up. Uh, somebody thought of it, somebody created it, you know, printed it out, let the world print it out as well, uh, sell it through there. It looks like the Etsy platform or something like that. Um, and then from there, we actually go into um, innovations to making it better, innovations to making it more digital per se, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but I did want to touch on the history of sundial clocks a little bit here. Uh, it looks like the first device for indicating the time of the day was probably the Nomen, dating back about 3500 BCE. It is considered a vertical stick or pillar and the length of the shadow it casts gave an indication of the time of the day by the 8th century BCE more precise devices were in use the earliest known sundial still preserved is an Egyptian shadow clock of green schist dating of uh, uh, at least from this period the shadow clock consists of a straight base with a raised cross piece at one end, the base of, on which is inscribed a scale of six time divisions, is placed in an east-west direction with the cross piece at the east end uh, in the morning and at the west end in the afternoon. The shadow of the cross piece in this base indicates the time. Clocks of this kind were still in use uh, in modern times in parts of Egypt. Uh, then it kind of goes on and talks more about another early device was a hemis uh, hemispherical sundial or a hemicycle attributed to the Greek astronomer Ast Aristarchus of Samos, about 280 BCE. Uh, his was made out of stone or wood and the instrument consisted of a cubical block into which a hemis hemispherical opening was cut. Um... And I think that was only uh, as with the Greeks, the Roman sundials employed seasonal hours at 290 BC. The first sundial, which had been captured from the Samnites, was set up in Rome. The first sundial actually designed for the city was not built until almost 164 BCE. In his great work, the Architectura, the Roman architect and engineer Vitruvius, uh, named many types of sundials, some of which were actually portable. So those are, I guess, like handheld watches. All right. Um, so, yeah, so you guys can do a little bit more research on these sundial timekeeping devices. Again, they were just really used for people to stay on track of, quote, unquote, what time of day it was. Uh, you know, really could only be used during the sunlight hours, which, you know, majority of the time, that's when... Uh, People were actually doing stuff. They weren't actually doing stuff at night unless they, you know, needed to. And then everybody would be on the same page as far as like, all right, what, what are we going to do throughout the day at certain times and where are we going to be and stuff like that. So the next thing that I have for you guys here today is Gatherverse. So Gatherverse is actually pretty interesting because at first I heard about them because of a summit, a Web3 summit that was coming up. I was signing up for it and then I was like, all right, well, what is, like, who's actually throwing this summit? And then I went to their website and 
Boom. So about Gatherverse, it's a global gathering discussing humanity first standards of education, safety, privacy, wellness, equality, community development, and accessibility in the next steps of the metaverse and emerging technologies. So again, they're all about humanity first. It's the seven standards of the metaverse. We want it to be accessible, metaverse access globally. Um, we want it to be uh, have some equality, you know, equal, especially in status, rights, and opportunities. Of course, safety and privacy is humongous in every, every space, safe and secure experiences for every visitor of the metaverse and emerging technologies is essential. Education, education is essential for every citizen on earth. It is this possible for the metaverse and emerging technologies? I think yes. Community development. What does community mean for the metaverse and emerging technologies? And lastly, wellness, mental and general physical wellness programs. So this is the seven standards of the metaverse, putting humanity first. And uh, oh, I like how that transition there. Um, saying it's multi-generational, generational thinking to take the next step, assembling global communities to form the one metaverse. They have a new media broadcasting broadcasting platform, which is gatherverse.live. I have not yet been there, so if you have, definitely let me know what it's all about. The founder is Mr. Christopher Lafayette. He is the founder of it. Um, I think there was, I don't think there's a co-founder. I don't remember seeing one. Uh, these are like community speakers. These are people who speak during some of these summits and stuff like that. And um, they got past events here. Music meets metaverse, free spring, mental wellness summit, gatherverse summit 2022. There's you have a gatherverse summit 2023 coming up here really soon. Well, I mean in 2023, of course, but uh, coming up here soon. Uh, which is here it looks like February 21st through the 23rd But the uh, the one thing that I want to touch on. Oh, let me see. Is there any? I don't think there was anything else uh, They have a podcast as well. They have a message from mr. Christopher Lafayette himself uh, Imagine a world of possibilities a world where global communities have e equitable Opportunities to collaborate globally with world-class researchers educators health professionals designers entrepreneurs thought leaders developers and also engineers where humanity is considered first in every approach, where students use the metaverse to discover, explore, and master new understandings of using technology for good, a world where youth and adults are using best-in-class hardware and software to attempt the impossible and drive meaningful change. We are building this world. We can build it together. Join us at Gatherverse 2023. And uh, they have a Discord, of course. you got to have a Discord. Uh, but yeah, I want to go to just to show you guys this event here, the three, uh, three WE, so Web three Summit. This is going on next sept. Um, this is going on next period, <laughs> September thirteenth through fourteenth, two thousand twenty two. Um, it's all about blockchain, crypto, DAOs, DeFi, DApps, NFTs. Uh, this is the one I kind of ran into. I wanted to sign up for and everything. So I just wanted to share with you all as well. Again, this is like in two weeks, maybe three weeks or something like that. Uh, so you got a little bit of time for it there and it's going to be um, uh, it's going to be a gatherers event that strives to define what it is what web3 is what its function is how it operates within the metaverse and more importantly where we are headed with web3 um, there you can grab the free tickets there you can also apply to speak you can join in as a partner with it, join the community, of course, get subscribed to their newsletter. They have all the speakers lined up. You can kind of see the speakers here. There you go. A um, couple of organizations that the speakers are from. Oh, Unstoppable Domains. We did a, we did a, uh, a thing on Unstoppable Domains not too long, like a week two, something like that. Uh, multi generation, of course, and humanity first again. We don't wonder if we want to mention that. And then, um, yeah, I think that's I think that's about it. Oh, uh, yeah, areas of exploration: decentralized autonomous organizations, which is DAOs, 
blockchain, crypto assets, NFTs, decentralization versus centralization, decentralized applications, which are dApps, DeFi, and then the environmental impact that's having on the world, uh, indicators of success there, and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, so yeah, you guys let me know what you think about that. Again, it's just a Web3 Summit that's coming up. Um, and then let me know if you know if you heard of gatherers before how well their summits actually go I plan on attending uh, I think it's virtual. I have to double check that. I think it's virtual. Uh, I plan on attending the web3 summit September 13th 14th, whatever the date was um, And you know kind of get more insight on what's going on in our in our digital world here uh, but another thing that's going on in our digital world is uh, the NFL so the NFL has a wonderful wonderful football player named mr. Tom Brady and Tom Brady actually came out well he's a co-founder in a um, I don't call it NFT platform but um, I guess you can call it NFT platform web3 platform I don't I, don't know, I hesitate to call it a platform I'm not sure how much you can actually I haven't so it's called autograph.io autograph.io and um, you can essentially buy like you know it's more sports based you can buy NFTs from there and stuff like that um, but for my digging, I don't, I don't know how, I don't have to really dig into it and see. But uh, if you're into sports and you definitely want to check that out, then. Um, but yeah, so what happened is that uh, they came out with a new program. So it's called the Signature Experience, and it's basically where you can get first, like first look, first hand access to Mr. Tom Brady himself, which is humongous because this is gonna open doors for fans with all of their players, not just Tom Brady, but also, you know, other major NFL players, basketball players, soccer players, baseball players, and so on and so forth. You get to have a firsthand act, you know, because with musicians and stuff like that, after a concert, you get like backstage pass. To my knowledge, you don't get like a backstage pass to any of these sporting, you know, events and stuff like that. But now it sounds like you can. You can you can actually meet your favorite players like Steph Curry or LeBron James and stuff like that. Um, it's going to be actually really, really interesting how this is actually all going to play out. Right now, I guess Tom Brady is the only one that is on there, the signature experience. But I'm pretty sure once this kind of explodes up, you, you'll be able to um, get closer to some of your other sports uh, sport team members as well. So it's a new interactive program. Accordingly, this premium feature brings fans closer to their favorite personalities through the power of NFTs. In short, holders of the upcoming limited edition signature experiences will get exclusive digital and physical perks. For example, fans can redeem holders on only merch, VIP event invitations, and communication channels with their favorite celebrities. Signature experiences challenges traditional notions of fandom and we imagine how devoted audiences engage with icons and each other by creating a richer, more interactive, community driven experience. Uh, starting September 8th, which is why I'm mentioning to you guys here now because I want you guys to, uh, any Tom Brady fans at least, to kind of get firsthand access with that. Uh, the new program called the huddle is creates an interactive digital journey featuring tom brady of course the portal will um give an insight into the player's experience in real life along with other perks so i want to just jump over here to autograph.io this is the website here i can see up here in the top in red has the tom brady signature experience again i'm not going to click on that just yet i just want you guys to see autograph.io the website itself how it kind of works out um, Derek Jeter, Tiger Woods, Tom Brady, of course, um, they have information about what is an NFT. Here are a couple of their feature editions. Oh yeah, Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk is uh, a skateboarder. Um, so yeah, this one's currently not for sale. Oh, that looks cool. I like how they did that. And this is, I mean, this is kind of like a trading card which is a digital trading card, which is amazing because you don't, you don't just get, you know, that, you know, I don't call it cardboard paper, but the cardboard paper that you hold in your hand anymore, you get an actual digital experience like this. That looks, uh, that looks spectacular. I want to view editions. Can I do that? Yeah. So what editions do they have? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Sapphire signed. 
Oh, these look cool. Let's click on that one. Oh, nice. Jeez. Yeah, that was hot. I like how they did that. I like how they did almost. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. I like how they did that. So, yeah, you can get that NFT as well. Uh, let me jump back over to autograph.io main page and just kind of lead on with the signature experience by Tom Brady here. It's all good. It comes with the territory. I'm ready. You think you know me. You don't. But what if you could get a front row experience to see who I really am? You know my face. You know my name. But it's got nothing on the real thing. Join the ride for my upcoming season. Introducing signature experiences by autograph. Yeah, cut. Great. That was good. That was good. Welcome to the future. Welcome to autograph. Okay, I, I didn't even know that was an actual video video the first time I saw it. Um... So yeah, so as he said, you get a first-hand real-life experience on who Tom Brady is. This is no ordinary season ticket. You get to unlock exclusive access to the huddle. This dynamic NFT is much more than a membership card. Each and every week, or after each week of the regular season, the season ticket will evolve with stunning visuals to reflect Tom Brady's updated stats and also his achievements. Uh, enter a portal to the Futura fandom as the first... Signature experience from Autograph the Huddle offers season ticket holders a chance to experience in an exclusive collaboration with Tom Brady, attend in-person and online events, and claim custom goods both digital and physical crafted specif specifically for the community. Um, yeah, so you get regional watch parties, parties, party with Tom and friends. So, Oh, cool. So you get an exclusive postseason party in Tampa for season ticket holders. Nice. With Tom and his friends. Virtual programming. Custom merchandise. Digital collectibles. I mean, you get a lot by, by joining in on this uh, with the NFTs and stuff like that. They have a September roadmap. October. I want to see what happens after NFL season is over, like in March. Yeah, March you get the end of season party with Tom Brady and I actually like that they actually describe what you get with your NFT throughout because sometimes you know it's hard to sell NFTs to somebody and say oh yeah you get exclusive perks it's like all right what are those exclusive perks do I get a t-shirt or do I get like a whole trip to Florida or something like that and it's, it's really nice that they actually added this information in here so you kind of know what's going on and what's coming down the, the pike there all right, so yeah, so you guys let me know what you guys think about that. Mr. Tom Brady is, um, again, an amazing football player. He does um, amazing work outside of that as well. He has a whole clothing line that I've been following as well. Um, so this would be actually pretty interesting. I'm not sure if I'm going to get his NFT. I got to wait. I think it was September 8th is when it's going to be launched. So I got to wait and see what happens then. Uh, but I might, I might, I might, I might. I don't have uh, too many NFTs with a lot of... Um, utility on it as the moment but i'm uh i'm taking it slow and steady and this is uh this is one of the ones i would actually kind of jump into um so yeah so nothing else that i have for you guys here today please do please do check me out on my social media channels please do hit up all of the links inside of the description and let me know in the comments what you think about all of these different articles and until next time you guys have a great wonderful rest of your day